Hello, hello, Daily Mentor Message Tribe. I'm sticking with the wellness theme again today, and I want to talk about the act of giving back, especially to those who cannot repay you. And, and I want to share some personal experiences in doing this by myself, uh, but most importantly, and the most memorable experiences is with my young children, teaching them this charity, this act of charity, or this sense of charity to giving back to people who ideally can't repay you and just look to donate to a cause, volunteer for a certain effort, do some things that are going to make others raise their awareness, raise their vibration, raise their sense of fulfillment. And ideally, when you can, do it anonymously because then there's no guilt debt or that what was, is also called the law of reciprocity. So in relationships, when you do something kind for someone or you do some someone a favor, sometimes they will take on this feeling that now they are obligated to do something kind for you or to, or to do something in return. And while that is a good thing, it can also be manipulated. So don't do this for selfish gain. Do it for no other reason than the sense of joy and fulfillment that you will feel in giving back, in doing something kind for someone. And so I'm going to share a couple examples. So I used to drive around with my kids a lot when they were younger and even now today, but it's been about a, it's been a couple of years since we've done this. But if we were driving and we came off of the freeway onto an exit ramp in the stoplight at the bottom of the exit ramp, turning onto a main city street, it's a very common place for people with signs, people that are looking for handouts, people that are just down on their luck. They're hungry. They need money. They need a job and whatever their sign says. And oftentimes if I saw in an, with enough notice coming down the on-ramp or the off-ramp rather, I would grab my wallet out, pull out a couple dollars, a five, a 10, and you know, a couple ones or whatever it was that I had. And I would give it to the kids in the back seat and tell them. And usually depending upon where, what side it was, I would let the kids alternate. So hand the money back, pull up to the, to the stoplight and tell, and roll down the kids' windows and tell them this is the instruction. Give them the money. And in some cases it was food but give them the money and tell them, God loves you, God bless you, have a great day. And then just give them the money. I'm getting teary eyed remembering those things, just the, the encounters that my children had with people that were truly down on their luck and receiving a $2, or sometimes $2 bills because they're special, single dollars, $5 bill, $10 bill from a child. And a child, and this was back when my daughter was three and my son was about six and seven, starting at that age and teaching them to do this. And now they're very, very charitable kids. They are amazing kids and think for others constantly. But just watching that interaction and sometimes if we saw someone and it wasn't money, they were, you know, need a job, need whatever, need money, um, need help, broken down car, whatever their sign said. And sometimes they were just hungry. And giving them money is not going to feed them. And if they did have the money to go buy something to eat, they would have to leave the position that they're in right now. So sometimes we would pass them up, go get some food and go back around on the freeway and come back around. And now my kids are handing them a bag of food, you know, a happy meal or, or wherever it was the local, the, the closest fast food restaurant, just giving them something to eat. And it always made me feel, and even in recalling these experiences, made me feel made me feel incredibly good on the inside. But watching that experience lived out through my kids, there's nothing like giving back, especially to those that cannot repay you. Now, in this situation, those people don't know who we are, so they don't have a sense of debt or guilt debt to want to give back to us to repay the favor because we'll likely never see them again. And so that's why that scenario works really, really well. Sometimes people will receive it. Sometimes, depending upon where they are and their brokenness, they may not. And I remember one time in San Francisco, I went to a restaurant, one of the greatest restaurants, Italian restaurants in North Beach in San Francisco called the Stinking Rose. And it's all about garlic is the Stinking Rose is why it's named that. And, and having the most amazing lasagna and the biggest portion I've ever had and not being able to eat it all. So having a to-go container and walking back to my car and on a rainy night and seeing this homeless gentleman in an alcove in front of a building trying to stay dry, 
with a sign, and I don't remember what the sign said, but I offered him my food, my leftovers. And he said, I want money. And I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna give you money, but I'll definitely give you my food. It's the most amazing lasagna I ever had. And he just cursed me out. And he said, well, then F you then. And I just remember feeling bad and feeling pity for the man that would turn away something like that because he was just so broken. And I don't know if he wanted to buy alcohol or drugs or what his scenario was. So I just ended up praying over him and walking away silently and just praying for him and wishing blessings upon him. So sometimes these acts of giving back will be received and they will be received incredibly that it will just make your day and decades later, you're going to tell the story and get brought to tears like I am. And other times it will be refused. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with that person, but do it anyway and do it charitably. Do it with no expectation of getting anything in return, which is why doing it anonymously is incredible. And I remember Marcy and I and the kids during the pandemic, we would go to farmer's markets and at the end of the farmer's market, we would buy up all the excess boxes. Sometimes they would have boxes of fresh organic fruits and vegetables. And we would buy up whatever boxes there was left over and then go deliver them to the neighbors in our neighborhood. Because back then people were having a hard time finding and being able to buy a loaf of bread. Remember when the toilet paper shortage and it was just literally chaos. And almost every one of our neighbors that we were giving these boxes of organic fruits and vegetables to were incredibly grateful. And I remember one guy said, we can't even afford to buy bread. Thank you. This is the perfect timing. And then the neighbor on the other side, there was a couple people that answered the door and one wanted to receive it. And the one behind, it was a, a younger and probably a teenager. And then the parent said, no, no, we're good. And I think what happened at that moment, the teenager wanted it, was ready to receive it. But the, the adult, uh, probably the parent, overruled because of the sense of reciprocity, that we would now have to do something for them in return, which was not the case. But I understood. And it was just sad because I, I saw the, the want and, the, and probably the need in the child's eyes or the teenager's eyes and the parent refusing it. So do not take anything that you do for people in an act of kindness. If it is not received well, it has nothing whatsoever to do with you. It's that person's ability to receive charity. Maybe they have a hard time receiving charity because they're so filled with self-guilt that they just don't want to, or they're self-loathing or feel unworthy or whatever the case may be. But do it for your own emotional wellness. And the people that receive, it usually blesses them significantly too. And do it for no other reason than to bless somebody. Don't ever do it with an expectation of getting anything in return because that's not what giving back is about. That is not what giving back is about. Give when you can give to those who cannot pay you back or they can't afford to pay you back or there's no way for them to pay you back. And it says in the book of Luke in the Bible in chapter 14, verse 13, I'm gonna kind of paraphrase that. Actually, I don't wanna paraphrase. I wanna find the actual verse and, and read it to you because it's very, very powerful. It says this, but when you give a banquet, invite the poor and the crippled and the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. So do it anonymously or give greatly to those who can't repay you because you will feel so incredible. That act of giving, that act of charity will make you and them most of the time feel amazing and give them encouragement to give back to someone else because that law of reciprocity doesn't have to come from the person who initiated it. It can come from balance because if you give, you will receive pressed down, shaken together, rolling over, overflowing into your bosom. It says clearly in, in the Bible. But if you give to someone, that person may not be the one giving back, but you will get back because it's the law. It's the law of God and it's the law of balance in the universe. The universe cannot exist out of balance. So do your part to give more good into this world by giving back and give to those who cannot repay you. Have a wonderful day. Take care. God bless. And if you found any value in this at all, please share it forward. Have a wonderful day.